it is amazing how our ancient people built breathtaking monuments and gorgeous temples one after the other cut out of pure stone that can last for thousands of years Pattadakkal is a heritage town situated in Bagalkot district of northern Karnataka sitting inside a cave from the 6th century probably a place for discussion or a place of for meditation During our stay at Badami we visited Pattadakkal located at a distance of 22 kilometers from Badami At Badami we stayed for a couple of days at Hotel Mayura Chalukya managed by Karnataka Tourism. On day 2 we started early in the morning for Pattadakkal. Badami is an ordinary looking town also in Bagalkot district of Karnataka but is famous for the breathtaking ancient Badami caves. The entire road from Badami to Pattadakkal is scenic due to the huge red rocks which loomed up at regular intervals. This entire region in ancient times was also known as Raktapura or the valley of red soil. Pattadakkal is a complex of magnificent temples from the 7th and the 8th century. Located on the west bank of the Malaprava river, it is also a UNESCO World Heritage site. There is a well-maintained lawn within this complex which is again surrounded by tall trees. Upon reaching the place, we collected our tickets from the main gate and walked towards the heritage site along the neatly paved path. As we had reached early, we were the only visitors at the time. The history of Pattadakkal goes back to a time when it was called Raktapura or the Red City. and also by the name of Kishuvalal which means the valley of red soil the most popular name for pattadakkal was pattada kishuvalal or the city of red for coronation this was the place where all coronation ceremonies of the chalukya kings used to take place the first three temples that we came across were the kala siddheshwara temple the galaganath temple and the sangameshwara temple This entire complex was a sacred site where kings were crowned and many of the temples were commissioned by their queens in gratitude for their husband's glorious return from battles and also to celebrate the success of the kingdom in different spheres. In fact the name Pattadakkal itself means coronation stone. There are 10 major temples at Pattadakkal. Nine among these are Hindu temples dedicated to Lord Shiva and one is a Jain temple along with numerous smaller shrines. Here we can see the Galaganath temple which was built in the year 750 and is one of the last temples to be built inside this complex. Next one is the Jambulinga temple which is built on a raised square platform and with a square sanctum inside. Each of these temples houses a Shivalingam inside made out of black granite. Pattadakkal is a testimony to the architectural expertise of the Chalukya dynasty. Built during the later phase of the Chalukya reign, these temples are believed to display the grandest and the most mature work of the dynasty. All these temples were built between the 7th and the 8th century. UNESCO has described Pattadakkal as a harmonious blend of architectural forms from northern as well as southern India.
the Patta Dakal temples reflect a fusion of two major Indian style of architecture, one from North India known as the Nagara style and the other from South India known as the Dravidian style. The Chalukya dynasty was a classical Indian dynasty and they ruled over large parts of southern and central India between the 6th and the 12th centuries. During this period, they ruled as three related yet individual dynasties. Their earliest dynasty, known as the Badami Chalukyas, ruled from Vatapi, which in modern days is known as Badami, from the early 6th century till the 8th century, and all the heritage sites that we see at Badami and Pattadakal are related to the Badami Chalukyas. There are numerous smaller shrines scattered throughout the complex. We entered some of these. As these are magnificent to look from outside, so are they gorgeous to look from inside with a variety of carvings and art. Shiva is the supreme deity of all the nine temples inside the Pattadakal temple complex and all these beautiful temples are dedicated to this supreme divinity. Sitting inside this vast complex with no one around takes you closer to Shiva the supreme consciousness which is present everywhere. Humans die but they leave back their footprints, their messages in various ways. Through these ancient architectures, not only in India but throughout the world, phases of civilizations are revealed to the future generations. Otherwise, how little we would have known about our ancestors. The grandly manifestation of our ancient heritage in the form of temples is a mark of the grandiosity of the kings and the emperors who made them, of the rich talent and thought processes of the artists who created them. Each of these are unique ones and these are the ones each of us must visit at least once during the course of our lifetime. The majority of Indian architecture is centered around the philosophy of Hinduism. We had distinct styles of temple architecture which depended on the region of India they belonged to which broadly can be divided into South Indian and North Indian styles. Virupaksha temple is the largest temple in the Pattadakal complex. This is an octagonal monolith which bears inscriptions. It opens with invocations to Lord Shiva. The inscriptions on the pillar tells us of the time when each of these temples were constructed. This octagonal monolith stone pillar stands tall since the 8th century to narrate the history of temples at the Pattadakal complex. It bears inscriptions engraved in both Sanskrit and Kannada on two sides of the pillar. Among all the temples at Pattadakal, the temple of Virupaksha is the most significant. It is the only temple where regular worship is conducted. It faces east and stands close to the adjacent village. This temple was originally known as Lokeshwara since it was erected by Loka Mahadevi, queen of the Chalukya king Vikramaditya II. Ancient Indians knew civil engineering, architecture, city planning and water management from long ago. Ancient Indian temples were built by transporting, assembling and sculpting huge stones. Civil engineering is not the one which is only printed in books. Ancient Indians knew about it from long ago. Probably they had more knowledge in strength of different materials than what we do now. And many structures actually prove it.
this temple there are ornate carvings of stories from the Ramayana and the Mahabharata carved on its walls Today most man-made structures do not last even a hundred years and to look at these marvelous creations which are standing erect for thousands of years. I feel we still have a lot to learn from the past. While I walked along this beautiful complex and in between the magnificent temples, I observed that adjacent to many of the temples are smaller shrines. While taking a look inside these shrines, there was a feeling of absolute peace and stillness within each of the shrines. I think these were probably used as a resting place for visitors or could have been used as a place for meditation. Sitting inside a cave from the 6th century, probably a place for discussion or a place of for meditation. Hello. Oh, that's a good one. I was a good one. The Mallika Arjun temple is a miniature version of the Virupaksha temple. A small passage from the Virupaksha temple leads to the Mallika Arjun temple. This was built in the year 740 AD. The two temples standing side by side and built simultaneously closely resemble each other in their plan, elevation and decoration. It bears inscriptions about the reigns of King Vijayaditya and Vikramaditya of the Chalukya dynasty. The inscriptions are in Kannada and Tamil script. Inside this temple, there are ornate carvings of stories from the Ramayana and the Mahabharata carved on its walls. There are continuous rows of pillars with each of the pillars carved uniquely.
There is an open Nandi Mandap opposite to the temple. The beauty, fineness and purity of these creations can leave anyone spellbound. Patta Dakal temple complex is so big, so elegant and so charming that we didn't realize how much time we spent exploring and wandering around. With awe and amazement, we finally convinced ourselves to leave this sleepy town of Patta Dakal, which was once the cradle of ancient architecture. Hazel, why, why, why? 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 Hazel, why, why, why?